we began last week talking about, as we consider the reason for the season, the series of messages that we are going to be sharing uh, through December. Uh, one of the things that I decided not to do this year in particular was simply preach the nativity all over again. I did that last year. Uh, angels and, and shepherds and mangers, that type of thing. And so this year, I decided that maybe we would just get messages that would kind of come in and fulfill uh, the purpose of why Jesus came to begin with. Again, like I mentioned earlier, if it hadn't have been for Jesus, we wouldn't be sitting together here today. We might could have met somewhere down at the local Lions Club or whatever and found out what we were going to be doing to, for our next charity fundraiser. But instead, we come to worship Jesus. I wanted to focus this morning on some of the things that Jesus did. One key thing, uh, the title of the message is that the, the carpenter came to build. Uh, you may be thinking, well, uh, that sounds good. That sounds like what Jesus did. But did you ever think about for building to take place, a lot of times there's got to be some destruction. If you're on a vacant lot that's wooded or whatever the case may be, it's got to be cleared before uh, that new structure can go up. If you are in a downtown area where uh, there's a new skyscraper wants to go up in the city of Raleigh, Durham, or whatever the case may be, uh, and there's an old building standing there, it's only two or three stories tall, guess what? Something's got to be leveled before that new one can go up. You ever watched Extreme Makeover Home Edition? You probably encountered uh, them when they come in. They don't have time to try to renovate these old houses. What do they do? When they realize that there's a problem with it and it's causing people health issues or whatever the case may be, they come in and completely remove it and start from scratch. And so when I talk about Jesus being able to come to build, you have to also remember that he came to do a little demolition before he could do some building. Uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 2 this morning. Hebrews chapter 2. We find three characters here as we go through this passage. First of all, if we think about Jesus and his work of demolition or destruction, we find that there are the devil, there's humanity, and there's Jesus himself. Let's see what role Jesus plays in this role as he begins to find ways to rebuild us into having Christian lives. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Now, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, John writes, he who does uh, what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. You see, Jesus realized there's a few things he's got to tear apart before he can build people up. And so I want us to, first of all, focus on this doomed devil this morning. And this doomed devil, there's a few things we could just probably uh, gather about the devil. First of all, the devil uh, holds the power of death. That's the one thing that he has power of. That's the only weapon he really has at his, dis at, at his disposal. And as we'll notice, the only way to counteract that is to find a way to come through death. And Jesus is the only one that is able to, to do that. De the devil finds pleasure in death. Uh, one of the things that I encounter with people more than anything, if there's one reality that we all go through, we're going to die. Uh, the biggest thing in what I find with people is how they embrace this inevitable thing we call death. Uh, people who are followers of Jesus, who personally have a relationship with Jesus Christ, most of the time are embracing death because they know that's going to get them to where they're ultimately trying to get into eternity. But people who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, death is a frightening thing. And so Satan uses this fear of death as his main weapon. Secondly, I think we need to understand that Satan's been sinning from the beginning. Has he not? Ever since it, time began, uh, Satan began this thing about sin. Uh, I, I, I get upset sometimes when I hear people when they're caught up in a sinful behavior and then they have a consequence because every sin has a consequence. Do you believe that? 
there's something that's going to take place as a result of the sin. There's a momentary pleasure in sin most of the time, but there's also a consequence of sin. If you are a drug addict, that momentary pleasure is going to be that little euphoric state that you're going to be in when you first hit that drug. The consequence of that is you become an addict. And all you can do is think about and focus on that drug. And you'll do whatever it takes. People sell themselves into prostitution. They take and they steal from their people they love the most, whatever the case may be, so that they can feed the sin in their life. Alcoholics do the same. Sex addicts do the same. People get hooked on pornography just like they do drugs. And it's a shame. It's been said that a man that has seen a, a pornographic image in his early teens will remember it well into his 80s. That one image is powerful. It is something that can have so much power over someone they do not know how to overcome it sometimes unless they had the power of Jesus living in their life. So Satan has been sinning from the beginning. He is the originator of sin. And because of that, we need to remember that when things are going wrong in your life and you say, well, I don't know why God's doing this to me. If it's a consequence of a sin, let me go ahead and tell you, it's not because God did it. It's because you allowed Satan to tempt you to do it. And you bit it off on the bait. Never blame God for Satan's work. What do we say? Oh, I wish God wouldn't let me to go through this. If I could only come out of this, I'd be so happy. If God really loved me, if God was really looking out for me, he wouldn't let this take place. Let me say this. God will never, never allow you to sin and bless you through it. You're going to have to reap the consequences of it. He enticed Adam and Eve, and through them, he put the whole human race in the bondage of sin. The other thing we find out about Satan is he wants to take us with him. <laughs> you ever figure that one out? Uh, he wants to take us with him. Two young boys were walking home one Sunday morning after their Sunday school lesson, and they were talking about their Sunday school lesson. And the thing of what was on was Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. So little Peter asked John, he said, Do you believe... Uh, this thing about the devil and this temptation thing, you know, do you really believe there's such thing as a devil? And John said, No, nah, I think it's about like Santa Claus. Might be your daddy. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people really don't take the devil as being real. Why would you? Because you know what comes with the devil? Punishment. I don't want to take, have a role with the devil because punishment's going to come with him if I believe that there's really a devil. Oh, I want to believe in a God because there's heaven and reward. But the Bible makes the devil a reality because he speaks of him in such a way. Do you know what Satan's been wanting ever since the beginning? To be worshipped. Remember Jesus' temptation in the wilderness? When he took, after Jesus was baptized and he was called away into the wilderness, Satan tempted him and he set him on the pinnacle of the earth, it says. And he told Jesus, he said, if you'll just bow down to me, I'll give you everything that you can see. Just bow down to me. And we as individuals, when we're at our most desperate state, especially when it comes to materialistic things, we're easy to bow down to them because it seems like those worldly blessings just keep pouring in and pouring in and pouring in. And as we do that and we allow Satan to give us those things, we realize that, you know what? He's going to take me with me. Take me with him. Well, that's a doomed devil because Jesus has the power to overcome all of that. But then there's a hopeful humanity. The truth of the matter is we're made of flesh and blood. Uh, that's the way we were created from the beginning. Uh, we were to be flesh and blood. And so we have taken on uh, this nature of what we are. Jesus has to take it on too so that we can come through whatever situations we're dealing with in our life. 